Ixalan pre-releases this weekend, which means a ton of you are heading out to your favorite local game store to get your hands on some Ixalan awesomeness. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Ixalan pre-release, give some general tips, then talk specifics about the sealed format to help you better destroy your friends and claim top prizes. I do hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button. helps out a lot. Let's get some basic info out of the way. A pre-release event will usually last around 4 hours minimum, with some events going much longer depending on how many people show up. The entry fee is usually close to $25 a person, sometimes a bit higher if the price support is better. When you go to these events, try to make sure you take care of a few things beforehand. First, shower, or get some deodorant or body spray. I stress this each time, but when you're in a closed off room with a bunch of other human beings, smells tend to amplify, so please shower beforehand. Don't smell like a trilobite. Granted, I don't know how they smell, but I can imagine it's good. Good. Anywho, after that, pack a snack. Local game stores usually have candy bars and bags of chips, but you really don't want to rely on those. I prefer Nature Valley bars, granola, apples, stuff like that. Brain food, as it were. Pack some of that because you might get hungry. Lastly, bring some dice, sleeves, and if you have it, some paper and a pen or a pencil to track life told us other information you want to write down. With all that basic info out of the way, let's talk about the actual event. Now when the event starts, you'll receive this nifty little box. Inside of said box will be six sealed packs of Ixalan and your foil promo pre-release card. This can be any mythic or rare in the set, totally random. In addition to these spoils, you'll also receive a spin-down Ixalan D20 and a little reminder card to tell you to use 17 lands when building a limited deck. We'll talk about that in a second, but you should listen to it. The Ixalan pre-release is a sealed deck event, which means you open all six of your packs and your pre-release promo, and you build the best 40 card deck you can out of what you open. 23 non-lands, 17 lands is the norm, usually 15 to 17 creatures, no drafting, no using cards from previous events, no trading with others during the event. You use what you open from that box, nothing more, nothing less. Now you can build a deck with over 40 cards, but I would not do that. You don't want to dilute your deck with subpar cards if you can help it. Alright, let's talk strategy now. After you open all your packs and separate the cards into their respective colors, you're going to want to look at your rares first, which is totally fine. Rares and Mythics are rares and Mythics because they're the most powerful cards in the game. If you open the likes of Carnage Tyrant, that's going to make you want to play green, that's natural, but I suggest a different approach. Before you look at your bombs, look at your removal. All your removal from every color and count it. Whichever color has the most removal in it, that's likely going to be a color you want to play or at least consider. In limited formats, games are often decided by who has the best answers. You want to have answers, so make sure you're playing at least one one color with a decent amount of removal in it. You don't want to let your opponent do whatever they want without some type of resistance. Prioritize your removal. It makes for a much easier pre-release, trust me. Once that's over, use the bomb rares you pulled and the amount of playables you have in each color to decide which way to take your deck. By this I mean cut out the cards that have such a specific use, you're probably not going to want them in any main deck of any strategy. For instance, Demystify, Favorable Winds, Raiders Wake, and Demolish are all cards that probably won't make main decks. These super specific cards that don't have a ton of impact or rely on too much else going right to be good, sideline these. After you do that, you'll have a better idea of how deep each color is. This limited format supports multicolored decks in a big way. You're going to want to be a two-color deck unless you have fixing that makes it easier for you to run three colors or you just have so many bombs in three colors you can't avoid running three colors. I've been there. It's risky, but sometimes it works. Anyways, Ixalan is a bit different than most sets due to its heavy tribal influence, which is why multicolored decks are pushed as much as they are. There are four main tribes in Ixalan. Dinosaurs, which are in white, red, and green. Merfolk in blue and green. Vampires in white and black. And pirates in blue, black, and red. Each color supports two different tribes, which makes it a bit easier to decide what you're going to play. If you're confused, focus in on a tribe that you seem to have a lot of. Most of the creature cards in this set that fall into one of these tribes tend to be better when played with more of that tribe. So if you're having trouble, you could even simply count the number of tribal cards you have and work off that. Due to the heavy tribal influence in the set, some cards are either playable or unplayable solely based on if you have an abundance of that creature type. For instance, River Herald's Boon, an instant that lets you pump a creature and a merfolk. If at least half of your creatures aren't merfolk, do not play this card. But if you have a plethora of merfolk, you can include this in your sealed deck and it'll perform just fine. The more of a creature type you have, the better these cards become. I have other examples for you to take note of. Imperial Lancer is a pretty subpar card, but with enough dinosaurs, it comes barely playable if you need a 23rd non-land card. Pterodon, Knight is a strong creature as long as you have some dinosaurs to give it flying. If you have barely any other dinosaurs, I wouldn't prioritize putting this in your deck. And Deep Root Waters is totally unplayable unless most every creature in your deck is a merfolk. I'm talking at least 10 to 12 merfolk. Just a crazy number of merfolk. Look, any card that requires creatures of the chosen type to be good are largely unplayable unless you have creatures of the chosen type. Don't play a tribal synergy card if you only have three creatures of that type is basically my point. 
Luckily, if you pick a creature type, you can pretty much play any creature of that type with few exceptions and be just fine. There's so much tribal synergy in the set that being in a specific tribe will reap rewards. However, you must fill out the rest of your deck somehow. So since we've covered removal and covered that most tribal creatures are good, we're going to talk about rares you shouldn't play and then non-tribal cards that you should definitely play. Rares and Mythics you shouldn't play. Ashes of the Abhorrent. Unless your opponent has some weird graveyard stuff going on, the life gain trigger is not worth a card, trust me. Boneyard Parlay. Hilarious spell not meant for limited, I'll tell you that right now. Not only do you need five creatures and graveyards before you cast this, but then you need seven mana at sorcery speed, another giant dumb black mythic spell that won't help you win until it's probably too late. Now, I have Revel in Riches, and I love booty as much as the next guy, but unless you're running a pirate deck that somehow creates just a ton of treasure, please don't play this. It's expensive, only triggers when opponent's creatures die, and it requires you to not use any of your own treasure. If you open the actual pirate deck like the whole thing, go nuts. But if not, the dream is just a dream, friends. And for the love of everything, Old Growth Dryads is such a trap. It is. I hate to say it, but a 1-mana 3-3 three, three isn't good when you accelerate your opponent. In standard, in a purely aggressive deck that has a plan, maybe. But in limited, you can't hope to build something aggressive enough to justify this. Just don't play it. Time to talk mechanical synergy. Ixalan comes with a healthy spread of mechanics across all colors, but some of these mechanics don't work all that well with certain strategies. When building your deck, and simply trying to become a better deck builder in general, it's important to take note of what mechanics are trying to do. We'll begin with Raid. Raid is a returning mechanic in Ixalan that was first introduced with the Mardu on Tarkir that should tell you all you need to know. Raid is designed to be an aggressive mechanic. You're rewarded for attacking, which means that in a slower deck where you aren't attacking early all that much, you might be losing some serious value on Raid creatures, which in turn might make them less attractive as inclusions in your deck. I enjoyed Dead Eye Tormentor a lot, but having to drop this without using the raid trigger feels pretty bad. So when you're looking at raid cards, if you aren't in an already aggressive deck, keep in mind that the raid trigger may not be something you can rely on. Conversely, looking at something like Explore is much easier on the mind. Explore is simply good everywhere. You don't need synergies for it to be good. Your creatures are going to explore when they enter the battlefield no matter what kind of shenanigans are going on as long as, you know, Takatli Honor Guard isn't sitting there. But besides that, Explore is great everywhere. Don't worry about its inclusion in any strategy. Let's talk about Enrage. Enrage is a fun and interesting mechanic that is really easy to trigger. Your dinos simply have to be dealt damage, which means that these cards can go in most anything because damage is a guarantee in limited matchups. But there are cards that perform better the more Enrage triggers you have in your deck. I may not always run Dual Shop, but in a dinosaur deck where you have a decent number of Enrage creatures, Dual Shop becomes very good. You can ping your own dinos and get some nice trigger action. Same thing with Ryle. Might not play it all the time normally, but perfect in a dino Enrage deck. Even something like Fiery Cannon an aid that you would include in most decks normally gets even better in a dino deck with Enrage. If you have dinos that can survive it, that's a hefty bunch of triggers right there. It's just something else to think about. Mechanic synergies are a thing in this set. Lastly, it's time to talk generally good cards you should be looking out for. I'm only going to focus on commons and uncommons because their rares are pretty self-explanatory. In white, Emissary of Sunrise, Rallying, Roar, and Sunrise Seeker are great for all white decks. In addition, even though they have relevant creature types, Territorial Hammer Skull, Steadfast Armasar, Raptor Companion, and Paladin of the Bloodstained are all good no matter which creature types you're running. For blue, Air Elemental, Perilous Voyage, and Run Aground are perfectly playable neutral cards. For Cross Tribal Strength, Tempest Collar, Wind Strider, and Water Tribe Weaver are great in any blue deck. Moving on to black, Seeker Squire is awesome. Other than that, most of the good black cards that aren't removal already have tribal allegiances, but it doesn't stop them from being good elsewhere. Anointed Deacon functions on his own just fine. Queen's Agent is worth playing for lifelink and explore. Queen's Base Soldier is a cur filler. And Sky March Bloodletter is just a good card. Three mana for a 2-2 flyer that drains one, no downside there at a fair cost. Moving it along, in red, Fire Shrine Keeper is a solid late game creature, Hijack works in any aggressive deck, same with Swashbuckling and Sure Strike. If we're talking cross-tribal shenanigans, I like Bonded Horncrest in any deck, same with Charging Monstrosaur, Fathom Fleet, Firebrand, and Tilanali's Knight. Honestly, that's not even it. I'd also be okay with playing Suncrown Hunters, Stormfleet Arsonist, and Stormfleet Pyromancer in most any red deck. Red's pretty deep is kind of what I'm getting at here. And finally, green. At Sakan Archer, I'm still going to play even without Enrage, Blossom Dryad for ramp if you need it, Emergent Growth, good stuff, and Exali's Keeper, all great. In addition, there are a ton of green tribal cards that are simply 
basically good cards without additional tribesmen. Snapping Sailback is an auto-include, Ranging Raptor is Merfolk Branchwalker, Jade Guardian, Drover of the Mighty for the ramp alone, and Deep Root Warrior for being a bear with upside. As you can see, there are plenty of great creatures for you to choose from in the sealed event, so start with your chosen tribe or tribe, see how far you can get there, and then fill out the rest of the deck with some of the cards I've mentioned in this video. Hope you took notes. And I think that's going to do it for the Sixalon pre-release guide. I hope you're all as excited as I am for the event. Pre-releases really are just the best. If you have any questions, concerns, want to say anything at all, please leave your thoughts down below, and I'll keep checking the video to be sure I get to as many questions as I can. I've been mock testing the set, and it is awesome. So please take advantage of my experience here. Anywho, I do hope you enjoyed the video, and hit that thumbs up button if you liked it. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Exelon pre-release is in a few days, which means that Exelon release is almost a week away. That's so close. Which means that while you still have time to pre-order Exelon boxes, you gotta get on that. $90 each right now via the link on their screen right from TCG Player. Cheap prices, fast shipping right when the set comes out. If you don't have a local game store or yours charges too much, I got you back right here. Helps the channel. We all get dinos and pirates and all that jazz. It'll be great to enjoy.